I'm on a secret mission. It's all very, very, very serious and everybody's quite tense already. Don't talk unnecessarily. I've had to promise that I'll be quiet. I struggle with quiet. They are here. It's kind of freaky. It's just all around yes. us. The sounds, big things moving in the trees above us. Okay, look at it. Here. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, he is moving, he is. Look, he just turned his back on us and now he's moving. I'm Lucy Cook and I love freaks. I am immune to cute. I do whatever it takes to seek out the world's strangest creatures ow, ow, ow. in the wildest places. I'm on a mission to show you why nature's oddballs are truly the most amazing animals on Earth. The island of Borneo is like a factory for strange animals. Its jungles teem with curious creatures. Frogs and snakes that fly. Fish that walk even primates with poisonous elbows. But there's one animal that gets all the attention, the orangutan. It's time to change that. I'm, I'm making a protest. Trying to line the big. I'm doing it for the freaks out there. They need to be heard. Good idea? Good idea. There's more to Barneo than orangutans, you know? Kids with neurosis! Exactly! Are you gonna go and see the orangutans? Why should the orangutan get all the love when there's a monkey here with a giant nose, a massive pot belly, and a chili pepper for a penis? The proboscis monkey is one of the strangest looking animals on the planet. And I'm going to find out what its oddness is all about. We're heading into some mangrove swamps to try and catch a glimpse of one of the strangest animals on the planet. It's a monkey that I've wanted to see all my life. It won't be easy. I can see some bubbles. They've probably been swimming already. This is Jungle Dave. Dave's brilliant. He's the man to spot the monkeys. There's one group there already. I can smell them. You can smell them? Surely you can smell them easily. Can you describe that smell for me? Oh, the smell is similar to a dog pee. A pee? Pee. You smell them? Just relax. This is the fruits to eat. Have a big bite. I'm going to try the proboscis monkey's favourite fruit. Chew it. I don't want to chew it. Chew it. You can feel the texture. Yeah, the the texture. taste. Yeah. It's bitter. It's good for diet. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a male call. That's a male call. Yeah. Right. Uh. Uh. I'm starting to have my doubts about Dave. Cruising the swamp sniffing for monkey pee isn't exactly working. Lucky for me, Dave has a cell phone. Already there. Okay, let's go. So we just had a call that the monkeys are on the other side of the village, so we're going to dash there now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, you can see them in the tree. There you go. We're going to jump. I can see look, them in the tree. See the boys. Oh, okay. So they're males. Yeah. This is a bachelor group. Yes. Eight or nine years old. The nose is still very small. It's only the big males, apparently, that have the really big dangly schnoz. Yeah. And there's one close by. So those trees moving over there, that's the dominant male, is it? Yes. Yeah, yes, okay. Yes, yes. He's getting close, but still no nose. There might be just one big nose monkey in a troop so spotting him is hard. Oh, they're moving away. Yeah, it's moving away. 
Uh, we try to go the other side to see because the other monkey is moving on the other side. So we're going to try and see if we can head them off. Oh, my flip flop! I just lost, I just lost my flip flop in the water. Can we get my the high flip flop back? The current is very strong. Yeah. Now, I want to see the monkey with the big nose more than I need a shoe. There's a big nose is there, look. Phil, Phil, the monkey's in the tree. Right in front of you, 12 o'clock. Right on top there. It's there, look. Oh, the big one there. The one sitting on top of the tree, that's a big nose. <gasps> oh, my God, he's huge. actually knows why they have big nose. No other primate has a face like it. And there's got to be a reason for its strange looks. Proboscis monkeys only live on Borneo, but they're not the only oddballs here. I'm hoping that if I track down the island's other weirdos, I'll find out what makes this place such a festival of freaks. I'm in Borneo's smallest country, Brunei, where an ancient forest is home to an entire cast of strange creatures. So the boat guy here is Iban, and uh, he's a descendant of headhunters. Looks like he's a good driver. Ooh, rapid! Brunei's oil wealth has helped these forests escape the axe. It's a haven for the oddballs I want to find. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Welcome to the primary rainforest. Yeah. This is it. So this is one of the last patches of primary rainforest in Borneo. And I'm hoping to find some pretty cool stuff because I'm with Dr. Omar Gray, who's not only very experienced and knows these forests very well, but it's also a frog nut like me. I rang up Central Casting and I said, can you send me a frog professor, please? And they said, we've got just the one for you. Frogs here are super specialized and Ulmar finds different species on almost every stream. Ulmar's been collecting frogs for his study and today we're going to release this is them. a poisonous rock frog here's mr poisonous rock frog there is nothing that makes me happier than a bucket of frogs look at her it's a bornean horned toad isn't she magnificent it's a frog that lives in the leaf litter on the forest floor Woo! <laughs> okay we have our celebrity frog back this lady's mouth is actually wider than her leg is long. Her, her strategy is to live on the ground and wait for dinner to walk on by. And then with a great big gob on her, she can gobble it up. Spot the frog. Can you spot it? There she is. Each frog has come up with its own crazy solution to the problem of survival. What? What? God, I'm so good at catching frogs. Oh, she's, she's making a play for it. She's going up the tree. Oh, he's good at catching frogs. I've wanted to see this frog all my life. I saw him on the telly when I was little. And this is a frog that flies. Okay. Oh, there he is. Look at, look at his feet. Look at this. So he's got these incredible webbed feet. And even webbed elbows. He's even webbed here. And that enables him to jump and glide from tree to tree. You're very lucky to see one because... <laughs> they, so you're very lucky to see them because they only come to the forest floor to breed. Otherwise, they live up in the canopy and you will never see them up there. Literally, this is a trembling moment for me. He's like 
my frog prince. I'm not going to kiss him. This frog is just one of many creatures that usually don't fly, but here they do. Borneo's home to flying lizards and even flying snakes. And here's why. <laughs> the rainforest of Borneo is the tallest in the world, which means that looking down is really scary. Oh, God. Well, we're very high up. We're about 50 meters here, and you can still see the trees are even taller than this. Now I'm up here, I can see if you're a frog and you want to get from this tree to that tree, you don't want to go all the way down to the bottom and then all the way back up again. You're going to evolve big flaps of skin so you can glide. But that doesn't explain the monkey's big nose. Somewhere in this forest, there is an answer to what that's all about, and I'm going to find it. I will bring the ladder. You never know when you'll need a ladder. You always carry one. Is it far? Oops. So Umar's taking me to see some very odd behavior. Um, it's clear that the Borneo forest is a laboratory of strange. Borneo's tropical forests have been evolving for over 100 million years, often in isolation and even through the ice age. So plants and animals have had millennia to develop some strange relationships. Ah, oh, these are the famous pitcher plants. You can see that it's actually a leaf. As it grows, it forms this pitcher structure and it becomes slippery, so any insect will fall into the digestive fluid inside this pitcher and cannot come out again. So this is a carnivorous plant? Absolutely. It's a plant that eats meat, fly meat, and that provides it with the nutrients it needs in this very poor soil here. Millions of years of tropical rains have washed nutrients out of the soil. Oh, look, they're everywhere. They're like something out of a science fiction film. Carnivorous plants just hanging out in this peat bog. One species sets its trap for something much larger than bugs. So be careful. Try not to move the vegetation too much. OK, let's have a look in there. Anything? Oh, it's moving. Oh, what about if I put, close my hand over it like that? Okay. <laughs> I've got to be very careful. Let me see if I can get my hand in. Oh, yeah, I've got a shot of it. Perfect shot. It's a bat. Oh, oh my goodness me. There really is a bat in there. It's not supposed to happen, right? These are carnivorous. What all Mars discovered is that they've got a bit of a thing going on, the pitcher plant and the bat. So the pitcher plant provides the bat with a place to sleep. And whenever the bat goes to the loo, he provides the plant with valuable nitrogen. It's a relationship found nowhere else in the world. You know, there might be a wing, you, you can grab it. And I see if I can get a wing, and he promised he won't bite, because I'd be mad he'll, as hell if I was woken bite, up. But he won't, he won't hurt you. <gasps> oh, he's wriggling in my fingers. Yep, got it. Oh, it's the tiniest. There were two. Oh, there was a second one. There were two. Oh, do you think they were having a romantic liaison? That we've probably just... mother and child, actually. Mother and child. I'm immune to conventional cute, but he is actually really cute, this bat. Ouch! Ouch! Ow! I haven't bat's got rabies. Hang on, guys. No, 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 not, not this one. Not, all right, OK. Yeah, why did, why, can, I, can I give it to Ulmar, please? So what kind of a bat is this? This is a woolly bat. What they can do is they can pick off insects from surfaces, which is called gleaning, and they fly through the forest, and they can detect insects on the leaves and they use this membrane between their legs and they scoop them up and then they eat them. So he was an odd one before he even started roosting in a pitcher plant? Definitely. <laughs> I'm going to put it back in its home. In you go. That's an incredible piece of evolution. 
that's going to take some beating in the odd stakes because that's truly strange. If the plants had to adapt to Borneo's poor soil, it's possible the animals here had to adapt to them. So how does the proboscis monkey get the nutrition it needs? I'm leaving Brunei for a place where even more proboscis monkeys live and where the danger to them is mounting. In Malaysian Borneo, palm oil production has led to widespread deforestation. The fruit is pressed into an oil used in millions of products, from margarine to lipstick. So we're heading to the proboscis monkey sanctuary, and you can see why they need a sanctuary, because unless you eat palm fruit, then there's not a lot to eat around here, and I don't think proboscis monkeys are keen on palm fruit, so, so I'm going to be helping giving them some breakfast. Hello! Hi, hello, good hello, morning. Hello, Jun Jun, good morning. Oh, wow, look. it's a major thing, look at this, it's like, oh. So be careful. It's like we're on an ice rink, isn't it? So I'm making um, pancakes for proboscis monkeys. They like their pancakes thick, the monkeys. Still runny. Oh my God. It's gonna be at least 100 degrees outside. And in here, it feels like it's about 200 degrees. <laughs> it's so freaking hot. I feel like I'm gonna melt into the pancakes myself. Do you do this every day? So every day, yeah. You love animals and you love the monkeys. There's a lot of love going into the pancakes. Yeah. There's a little bit of hate that's gone into my pancakes. Yeah. I'm a bit worried they give, give them indigestion. Ow! 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 That's monkey for pancake. Ow! Ooh. Ow! This is a bachelor yes, group, bachelor. is it? Yeah. Can you see the red chili? I can't see the yeah. red chili. Yeah. Red, like a uh, lipstick. Like a lipstick? Yeah. Are you talking about his penis? Yeah. All of these guys have got, got it out. Look at them, they look so cool, man. Oh my God. Hey, look, look at it, look at it. Oh my goodness me. Look, it's like a human. He stands like a human. You, oi, you, cheeky monkey. Do you want a little bit of pancake? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Hello, sir. Do you want to hold my hand? He's holding my hand. I can't believe it. So one of the things that I love about these monkeys is their big Buddha stomachs. And the reason why they have this massive, great big pot belly is because inside there is a whole soup of bacteria that's trying to digest their normal diet, which is leaves, which are full of cellulose and they're a bit toxic. On Borneo, that nasty diet has its advantages. In the poor soil here, trees don't bear fruit often. And that's the secret to the proboscis monkey's success, because they've evolved to eat this quite undigestible food. They don't have to out-wrestle Borneo's dozen other primates for food, but there's a cost some pretty unsavoury side effects. As well as suffering from terrible perpetual gas, they also um, regurgitate their food and then swallow it again. <gasps> There's a baby! This sanctuary is not just for bachelors. This is the lead male, and these are all of his chicks. He's got 20 girlfriends. <laughs> So because he's the head of the harem group, that means that he's the biggest, toughest male in this area. But the bachelors are brazen. They like to live next to a family group to try and have a go with the ladies. Check me out, and I'm gonna have your girlfriend soon. <laughs> you 
the lead male of the family group is protecting his turf against this roving bachelor group. No blows are exchanged. The family leader prevails. Ooh. Apparently, the jockeying for sex here is more intense than the competition for food. I have one last thing to do. There's a couple of goodies. Oh, God, it's stinky, too. OK, let's take that. So as unconventional as this may seem, I'm now going to take home some of the proboscis monkey poo. No, I'm, I'm after your poo, mate. This is, there's no, that's poo. I know. Yeah, I know, you've now got your own on your hands. Listen, mate, I don't have any more pancakes, OK? I'm, I'm not some sort of neat freak that's cleaning up after the monkeys, but I need their poo because I'm meeting a dung beetle expert later, so... That looks like that's a nice, fresh one. Excellent. Monkey poo. Borneo's oddballs have found innovative ways to find the food they need. But the one I'm after next has to dine at the food chain's rear end. So, Mike, what is that? Um, this is the <laughs> kit. <laughs> In Borneo, the fight for food goes on everywhere. We're looking for the best spot to lay dung beetle traps. Because Mike here is an expert in dung beetles. This is dung boy. So what is the well, kit? Well, there's no poo inside. Yeah. You're missing the main ingredient. Now I've got you special present. It's very kind of you. Yeah. Does that make you happy? Yeah, some, some grade A monkey poo. <laughs> Just to make everybody feel a little bit more comfortable about their jobs, it's referred to as bait. Let's us sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> Call it what you like. I don't envy Dung Boy's job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nugget. All the beetles, like for that matter. Kind of is that a sphere, about a sphere like that? A bit more is A better. bit more. Mike assures oh. me the beetles will be lured to the bait and fall into his traps. That's great, isn't it? Look, it's so nice. It's like a little palace it's got there. <laughs> One dung beetle trap. Now all we have to do is wait for word to get around that there's some fresh poo in town. Right. So I, I feel I've worked up an appetite after all that. Really? I always find I need a good bit of time after doing it before I can eat. While we wait for the beetles to descend, I want to find the freaks that only come out at night. Oh, wow, it's a tarsier! Each one of his eyeballs is bigger than his brain. He can turn his head through 360 degrees, pretty much, to compensate for the fact that his eyes are so big, they can't swivel in their sockets. OK. Whoa! This primate is known as the furry frog for his leaping skills. It's like you or me doing a standing jump to the forest canopy. He's a whopper. It's wriggling. It's a little bit gross. <laughs> it's the sort of probing on it, isn't He's it? a bit more muscular. He's been working out. Can't believe they get to a metre long. Yeah, big Borneo worm. The night jungle is also home to the slow loris. This primate has poisonous elbows. He actually licks them to deliver a deadly bite. Finally, there's the Kalugo. Its giant flaps of skin let it glide farther than any other mammal. Time to check the crap traps. They look really cool, though. They are. They're real bruisers, aren't they? They are. They're little tanks. Dung beetles can smell a poo from almost a kilometre away. Would well, you think we can get them to sort of roll dung for us? Will they demonstrate this? Well, we've got dung... a pile. We could try. Mm. The monkey poo that I bought yesterday is a bit dry for them to be interested in, so apparently we're going to have to use something fresh. So we're going to use the natural surrogate used by dung beetle ecologists all over the world, which is human. Human poo. Human poo. Can we just, like, maybe just... I was thinking, like, a little bit, do you know what I mean? Okay. Not like a whole log. <laughs> OK. We've got some party treats out. The nibbles are out. The nibbles are out. 
and um, let's get the guests out, shall we? Come on, smell. I can smell it. What's wrong with you? Wakey, wakey. Look, there's just a big pile of poo behind you. Oh, here he comes. He can, I've done it. Look, he's like... The dung beetle whisperer. Oh, look! Anybody that goes on about, oh, pandas are so cute, whatever, I happen to think a dung beetle waking up and stroking his antennae is incredibly cute. It these is. These are like little, really sensitive antennae. They're poo detectors, basically. Like, oh, Nirvana, manner of heaven. Oh, I thought you'd left me. <laughs> you guys, I can't, I, you can't make me laugh. I can't shoot when I'm laughing. Don't be funny, okay? It's too macro-y. Don't be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Once the party starts, each species has its own strategy for getting its piece of the poo pie. So this is a tunneler. The tunnelers got these big shovels on the fronts of their heads. Have we got any rollers so the in there? The little ones with the long legs are rollers. He's he's going for it. He's going for the roll. This bunch of rollers are all in a big knot. In one Borneo forest, 97 dung beetle species have been found. More than anywhere else on the planet. How important are these guys to the forest? These are one of the groups of insects that really run the show in the forest. So they're the guys that do the heavy duty work, keeping the forest healthy. So if it wasn't for these guys doing their recycling job, yeah. then we'd be up to our necks in poo everywhere, yeah. basically. Yeah. The struggle for food shapes a lot of what's strange here. But that doesn't really explain the proboscis monkey's crazy nose. To discover the whole story, I'm going to have to head much deeper into the Bornean jungle. We're going to the Danal Garang Field Centre with this man, Benoit Goosen. Hopefully I'm going to get the chance to honk a proboscis monkey's nose. Don't tell Benoit. Well, Lucy, welcome to my kingdom. And are you a <laughs> benevolent leader? Well, you've got no, some no, really no, no. bizarre strict rules. No, no. Oh, yes, I have some strict rules. I mean, yeah. one of them is no swimming in the river. No swimming in the river. Yeah, because Number we one. have uh, large uh, crocodiles. Because of the large crocodiles. Yes, right, very that's large. A good rule. And if you don't respect these rules, then you are out. Really? <laughs> and I, and I've got to swim home. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Benoit and his students are trying to capture and track 10 wild monkeys to learn how to protect them. How many times have you done this so far? Number seven. Number seven. Number seven, yeah. They want to catch a big male tonight, and I'm going along. In the meantime, I can check out more of Borneo's fantastically strange animals. What a welcome! I've just arrived, and already weirdness is travelling to meet me. Hey, I heard you were looking for odd animals. <laughs> look at me, look at me. Benoit, have you ever seen this before? No, that's the first time, actually. I've never seen that. Yeah, it's a moth, oh, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's probably a moth. Now, the thing that I love so much about field stations is that it's a place where I can release my inner geek. Whoa, that is weird. This is lantern bugs. These are the lantern bugs? Yes, lantern bugs. It looks like they also have a giant nose, but that's actually their mouth, a tube they use to suck up sap from the trees. Borneo is a bit like Alice in Wonderland. There's a lot of big things and small things that shouldn't be either big or small. Maybe the giant mosquito eats the tiny frog. Pygmy, dwarf, squirrels, this big. An order of weirdness that I hadn't imagined. In this upside-down world, insects grow bigger than mammals. There, it's a really big stick insect. Borneo is home to the world's largest bug, a stick insect. Many animals that grow massive on the mainland are smaller here. Well, except for the crocodiles. These are pygmy elephants. So we're allowing them. They are actually still odd, because they're pygmies, they're dwarfs. You see the top of his head? That's a myth. They're just two-thirds the size of African elephants. storm looms and suddenly we hit trouble. Like why is it, why are we sinking? Don't know. But we're sinking. 
Dans nous. Watch your weight. Everything was going just fine. See so the elephants, it was all great, and now we're sinking. And there's crocodiles and all sorts of other. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's just seeping into the back. You guys want me to paddle? Yeah. We're a long way from the shore. We're stuck. We're stuck. I'm gonna swim. You're gonna swim? <laughs> Benoit is dragging the boat. <laughs> Bloody hell, it's a proper emergency. Oh my god, that man deserves a medal. Benoit, you genius! <laughs> we are now safe. Thanks to Benoit's right, heroism. One, two, three. Benoit, I just want to say thank you for the uh, elephant tour. It was really, really something. <laughs> do, do you always do that trick with the boat at the end? Is that no, 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 it was only for you. <laughs> only for you. We've missed our chance to catch a monkey tonight. It'll have to be tomorrow, or not at all. It's time for Operation Proboscis Monkey. Big night, yeah. We've got everything? We've got everything ready to go and catch monkeys. Benoit's team wants to place a GPS beacon on a wild monkey to learn about how it lives. I hope that I'll get the answer to its oversized nose. Well, obviously, tonight is the night I've got the best chance of squeezing a proboscis monkey's nose. That's 